Spencer House was one of the most significant commissions of James Stewart's career. The prominent house and sumptuous interiors were constructed for John the First Earl Spencer, an ancestor of Diana, Princess of Wales. It remains today a landmark of British architecture and design. John Spencer was a member of one of England's most illustrious families. At the age of 11, he inherited a vast fortune from his great-grandmother Sarah Churchill, first Duchess of Marlborough. Spencer devoted much time to Italian travel and was regarded as a noted collector and patron of the arts. At the age of 20, he purchased a prime site on St. James's Place, ideally situated alongside Green Park and just a short distance from the Royal Court. With his new bride, Georgiana Points, Spencer embarked on an extensive building project to create a London townhouse which in size, opulence, and design would reflect the wealthy couple's status and taste. The construction of the house began in 1756 under the direction of architect John Vardy, who completed the exterior and ground floor apartments. Vardy's Palladian architecture can be seen primarily in the building's exterior, which features a pedimented and columned stone facade. He especially embellished the parkside elevation to serve as the principal front for public view. The decision in 1759 to employ the famous and fashionable Athenian Stewart to design interiors was a declaration of the Spencers' taste and their endorsement of the emerging aesthetic inspired by classical antiquity. Stewart, despite his lack of formal architectural training, was an ideal choice. He was newly returned from a decade of studying antiquities in Italy, the Venetian Republic, and Greece, and was in the midst of producing the first volume of his much-anticipated Antiquities of Athens. In an effort to update the work of his predecessor, Stuart made a number of changes to Vardy's existing designs for the ground floor of Spencer House. In the entrance hall, Stuart was likely responsible for the addition of a bas-relief over the fireplace depicting Antinous, the lover of the Emperor Hadrian. This was a cast of the famous bas-relief excavated in Hadrian's villa outside Rome in 1735. In the staircase hall, Stuart replaced the proposed cove ceiling with a barrel vault and changed Vardy's designs to incorporate Greek details, adding the ewer and lyre motifs under the landing and substituting Greek pilasters for Vardy's Roman ones. Upstairs on the principal floor of the house, Stuart designed a sequence of richly decorated staterooms as well as the private quarters of Lady Spencer. While the decorative elements of Lady Spencer's bedroom and dressing rooms are now lost, much of the furniture survives, including a mahogany chest, wardrobe, and pair of washstand tables. The oblong chest with an inlaid top and gilt mask handle takes its design from ancient forms represented on Greek vases and architectural reliefs. The matching wardrobe was more conventionally Georgian in form, but was decorated with similar Greek details. The washstand tables also feature an inlaid meander pattern as well as a carved running motif derived from the decoration at the Temple of Concord in Rome. At the head of the stairs, the music room is the first in a sequence of elegant staterooms designed for receiving guests and entertaining. Today, only the room's frieze survives in situ. Originally, the decorative scheme included a sumptuous gilt door case, a chimney piece of sienna and white marble, and a chair rail embellished with Vitruvian scrolls. The room's furniture, now at Althrop, the Spencer family's country seat, represents a synthesis of ancient French Rococo, neoclassical, and English Palladian sources. For instance, Stuart revived the standard Palladian pier table with a long mirror, but he derived the table's semicircular form from the world of classical antiquity. This was one of the first semicircular models to appear in the 18th century. The form soon became popular and remained an icon of refined taste throughout the second half of the century. Next in the series of rooms was Lady Spencer's dressing room, which functioned not as a private room but as a drawing room in which she received her guests. Among Stuart's most accomplished designs is the room's mosaic ceiling, which was a modified version of the ceiling in the Baths of Augustus, illustrated in 1719 in a book by Bernard de Montfaucon, L'Antiquité Expliquée. For large parties, the doors to the adjoining great room would have stood open. The great room functioned as a space for entertaining. 
Once inside the great room, guests encountered an extraordinary coffered ceiling, which is divided into nine sections, its center containing three semi-domed circular compartments. Set into the ceiling are four medallions, each evoking the theme of entertainment, including Bacchus with a wine cup, Apollo, the god of music and the arts, the three graces, and Venus on her chariot supported by Hymen, the god of marriage. Stewart's furniture for the great room reflected French Rococo taste tempered with neoclassical details. The room once contained two gilt wood console tables with mirrors and an elaborate 48-piece suite of white and gold seat furniture made by John Gordon. Details such as the fluting, floral garlands, masks, and putti that adorn the objects come from ancient sources. The sequence of staterooms culminates with Stuart's masterpiece of painted decoration and furnishing, the painted room. The only surviving drawing by Stuart for Spencer House is a watercolor proposal for the north wall of this room, dated 1759. The room takes its name from the murals and painted panels that cover the walls and ceiling. This elaborate decoration, with illusionist panels supported by lifelike humans and animals, were based on ancient Roman interiors in the grotesque style. The painted room is the first application in Britain of grotesque ornamentation to walls, not just ceilings. The panels and insets explore the themes of love, marriage, and romance, making the room a celebration of the union of John Spencer with his wife, Georgiana. The Spencer's marriage was one of the great love matches of the day. While Georgiana came from a relatively obscure family, she was exceptionally intelligent, well-educated, and charitable. Having no need to marry for wealth, John Spencer arranged a secret wedding with Georgiana, which took place the day after he came into his fortune. In the painted room, the most striking reference to the Spencer's union is a unique chimney piece ornamented by a painted copy of the Aldobrandini wedding, an ancient Roman fresco depicting a clandestine marriage. Although several artists, including Van Dyck and Poussin, had produced copies of this work, Stuart was the first to use the painting in an architectural setting. Another wedding scene is represented in a circular panel in the apse of the room. Here, in a Greek wedding, the bridegroom holds his bride's wrist, as was the Greek custom. In addition to the painted decoration, the furniture that Stuart designed for the painted room was overtly rooted in the antique. Marble thrones of antiquity with their winged animal motifs provided the starting point for Stuart's gilt wood sofas and matching armchairs. Animal leg supports, particularly lion's legs, were a basic element of ancient seating forms used by both the Greeks and Romans. The rich carvings and monumental lion supports adapted by Stuart are naturalistic in treatment, with wavy fur patterns on the upper legs. The sofas and chairs were designed to fit the contours of the room. They were arranged to ensure that the carved lines were seen to best advantage by visitors entering the room. Both contemporaries and later visitors found the painted room extraordinary. An Edwardian historian in 1908 commented, We are no longer in a London reception room. We are in the tablinium in the house of Marcus Lucretius, or in one of the remarkable painted chambers in the dwelling of Meliager. That red light in the sky is not the sun setting over the trees of the Green Park, but the afterglow of some great eruption of Vesuvius. If a door open, surely Glaucus or Diomed or the blind Nydia will appear. It is truly a room in which to dream of the past. <laughs>